Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about reflective and formative model in Smart PLS. So when it comes of drawing the model on the canvas, uh, in case of uh, reflective, the arrows are moving away from the construct and in case of formative, the arrows are moving inside the construct. This is just a difference in terms of drawing. But when it comes, of the, in, when it comes on theoretical difference, let's see. If I say that the degree of drunk, drunkness is a construct which, uh, is, which is represented by some characteristics which are exhibited by the drunk person. So, if there is a slurriness in the speech and there is an interaction problem or uh, there is a problem of ability to walk on the stra straight line or there is a reaction rate. So, these are all you can say the consequences of a person, uh, consequences of being drunk. So. If we talk about reflective, they are, the statements are more consequences oriented. Now, why, uh, it's, it, why we consider it to, it to be a consequence is the reason is that a drunk person does not have any, uh, you can say, option of exhibiting a particular characteristic. That, say for example, he will say that today I will be only exhibiting that I am having a problem of interaction ability. He cannot have an option of choosing uh, what he will exhibit. It means that all these statements or all these characteristics will move together. All these characteristics will move together. And therefore, they will be having a very strong correlation among them. So, in case of reflective, the statements are more consequences oriented and there is more a correlation among these statements. Because they all these statements happen simultaneously. Now, if I talk about that how a person can get drunk. So there are number of ways a, uh, how a person can get drunk. One, either he can consume beers, he can consume spirits, and it depends on how much time has passed for after the last alcohol be, alcoholic beverages and what are the fat content of the last meal. So here, it's more a causes. So in case of formative, the statements are causes. Now, here, the correlation among the statements will be very low. The reason is, for a person to get drunk, it is not necessary that he should, he should simultaneously do all this thing, then only he will get drunk. No, either of them will be uh, working as a causes. So, consuming the beer can also cause the uh, drunkness, number of spirits can also cause, cause the drunkness. And therefore, these statements do not move. Uh, uh, in you can say they are not closely knitted together and therefore the uh, uh, correlation among them is low. So, in case of formative construct, the statements are more causes oriented. In case of reflective, they are more consequences oriented. I will take another example that the life stress which is there, the life stress. It can happen because of job loss, divorce or recent accident. Now, it is not necessary that a person can get stress only if these three incidents happen simultaneously. Any one of them can cause stress in, in the life. And that's the formative. If I talk about reflective, a timeliness is a construct which is represented by X1, X2 and X3. That is accommodating the last minute request, the punctuality in meeting the deadline, speed of returning phone calls. So, this is according to the Hulen, he, he, what he said is that all these statements are necessary to be exhibited to give the to tell that the person is uh, you can say time oriented or time he works on time so that is timeliness now this is according to the authors uh, in the book uh, the book which they have published a primer on parcel least square structural equation modeling the source is given below this example is there in that book only that a person if a person is satisfied, then the characteristics which he will exhibit as a consequence is a reflective. So I appreciate this hotel. I am looking forward to stay in this hotel. I recommend this hotel to others. This is more consequences and therefore these are all reflective statements. But if I say that why a person is satisfied, more a cause is oriented. So the service is good and that's the reason he is satisfied. The personnel is friendly, that is the cause, the rooms are clean. So, in case of formative, these are causes. In case of reflective, these are consequences. 
a construct at a time can be formative also and reflective also so all blue arrows which are coming inside they are indicating that they are all the statements for formative and the red arrows which are moving away from the construct they are all uh, you can say reflective constructs now what is the difference between the reflective and formative reflective reflect the items uh, in the first slide only we have discussed that thing in formative items form a construct in case of reflective indic indicators must be highly correlated i have given you the example that a drunk person will exhibit all the characteristics stick simultaneously and the statements will be highly correlated with each other in case of uh, formative correlation not expected in case of reflective removal of one item does not affect overall construct there may be 10 characteristics of the drunk person if you remove one characteristics nothing will happen then also the item will uh, remain as it is or uh, sorry construct will remain as it is in case of formative omitting an indicator is omitting a major part of the construct you are trying to evaluate the effect of beer on the drunkness and you are removing that construct uh, that statement only so here it will impact a lot in case of reflective when item is removed it does not affect the overall contained validity but in case of formative it it, it can the content validity may suffer in case of reflective the same construct is measured by asking similar questions uh, by asking similar questions in case of uh, formative different questions are asked statements are more co consequences here statements are more causes items can be interchanged or other words we can uh, substitute one item with other in case of reflective construct but in case of formative items cannot be substituted direction of causality is from construct to item here direction of causal uh, causality is from item to construct now <clears throat> there are five scenarios in which we have to go for the formative measurement model and there are some indications which we get and from here we should say that my model may be a formative model so one of the thing is that the theory is suggesting you feel that your statements are more causes or dimensions or parameters then you will have to go for formative and when you get CR less than 0.7 and AVA less than 0.5 then you go for formative construct now why we in this scenario we are going for formative construct let's try to understand in reflective there is a high correlation among the statements and when the when the statements are highly correlated you will get high Cronbeck alpha high composite reliability and high row and high average variance extracted but in case of formative there is no correlation or rather very moderate correlation among the statements and therefore correlation will go down and as it will go down CR and AV also will go down and in this scenario it is an indication that there may be a possibility that this is a formative construct uh, if uh, in one two three scenario you will have to check the convergent validity by redundancy analysis which is carried out by using the single global item in fourth and fifth scenario where no model is available or we are in this is out to the items we carry out confirmatory tetrad analysis the formative model assessment procedure is state step one we will check the convergent validity of the model uh, that statements are to be retained or not then we will check the collinearity issues and then we will check the significance and relevance of the formative indicators the redundancy analysis basically has been uh, this approach has been given by Chin uh, 1998 that we are including a single global item in our uh, in our analysis now what is this single global item let's try to understand that you have asked some statements on tangibility you have asked some statements on assurance, empathy. Now there are five statements on service quality. And in last, you should ask overall, rate the overall service. You must have seen uh, in the malls or in the restaurants that one, two, three, four, five questions are there. And in last, they say overall, what is your uh, experience with our, with our services? So when I place this one single global item, which is a representative of five statements which are above it, it is considered to be the single global item. Uh, it is necessary that the global item is introduced at the, 
at the questioner level only when you are developing the questioner at that time only it is necessary that you should have a single global item in your questioner the guidelines of global item is inclusion of the global item should be done before data collection it should be the crux of entire construct it should be captured on the same scale as that of the other statements and the rating given by respondents on the global items will be based on evaluating the entire construct. Now let's see uh, on canvas how we will draw it. Now this is independent variable which is being uh, which is on formative scale because arrows are moving inside. Now this uh, we will connect with the global item which is on the reflective scale. This one only one measured variable is there which is a reflective and we are connecting both of them. Advantages of single item construct is its model is very easy and uh, easy to understand. Cognitive dissonance is reduced. It increases the re uh, response rate, rate and reduces the suspicious response rates. Now this is a, a chart which we will use to retain the statements. This we will see later on. For, there are two assessments which we will have to carry out. The first assessment is ideally a magnitude of 0.9 or at least 0.80 and above is desired for path from y1 to y1 reflective this is desired but above 0.7 also you can go ahead if it is above 0.7 then we can say that the statements are to be written and the conversion validity is achieved now why we, go, we are going on this path because we cannot use the traditional path of ABE, CR, Cronbeck alpha because the correlation is low and therefore we are taking the path of checking the conversion validity in formative construct. The second assessment will come from the collinearity issues. The, there should be very less uh, uh, correlation among the constructs. VI, variance, inflation factor should be less than three. Basically, tolerance is the inverse of VIF and VIF is inverse of tolerance. Now, how to carry out this thing in uh, smart PLS? Let us try to understand. We will go here and first of all, we will activate this thing. Now, this is a attrition which has been captured by three statements. One, two, three. We are introducing a single global item which is being captured on the reflective scale. This is reflective. Now, if I get this path coefficient more than 0.7, the conversion validity is achieved. In, in the case of, uh, you can say, if it is less than 0.7, what to do, that we will see later on. So, to carry out the conversion validity, you will go and calculate bootstrapping. And according to the authors, this should be kept at 5000. But for the tutorial purpose, I have kept it 1000 because it takes a lot of time. Therefore, um, uh, this is 1000, make sure complete bootstrapping is on and start the calculation. Once this is done, you can see it is 0.874 greater than 0.7 and conversion validity achieved. P-value is also more than 0.05, so we can say that it is significant. This particular thing we can also see on the path coefficient and therefore things are okay. So first assessment is checking this path coefficient. Second assessment in case of uh, a conversion validity for formative is you will have to go and calculate PLS algorithm and you will have to run this and you will have to check the tolerance. Now this tolerance should be less than 3. If it is less than 3 then the conversion validity is achieved. Now we will talk, uh, we will, uh, talk about the scenario in which say for example this is not more than 0.7 what to do. This is not more than 0.7, then what to do? In that scenario, what we will do? We will go in bootstrapping and first of all, we will check the outer weights. Let's see the diagram. The diagram which is there uh, uh, here, this one. This is a decision tree which is there. Is path coefficient greater than 0.7? Yes. We have less than 3. Yes. Conversion validity achieved. In case of dispute between these two, what to do? Then you will have to go in outer weights and we will have to check the p-value of all this path coefficient and bias corrected confidence intervals should not contain 0 
in their confidence interval. Now, what do I mean to say? Let's see. You again go in outer weights. In, this is in case of dispute. What the dispute is that you are having a path coefficient less than 0.7. Check that p value. Is it less than 0 0.05? Yes, it is less than 0 0.05 and uh, things are okay. So this is first thing you have to check in outer weight. Second is check confidence by intervals bias corrected. Now here, these two intervals should not contain zero in between them. If it contains zero, then that this statement is insignificant. Let us check positive to positive. So it means that there will not be any inclusion of zero in it. Positive to positive, no zero. Positive to positive, no zero. And therefore, all these statements are significant. Now, say for example, if there was a dispute here also, then we would have gone still one more level up for outer loading. Now, if this is more than 0.5 and if this is significant, then you will retain the statement. In either case, if it becomes less than 0.5 and this is insignificant, then you will have to delete the statement. Now, let us see the path diagram again. The path diagram is is path coefficient more than 0.7? We have less than 3. Yes, conversion validity achieved. If it is no, are outer weights significant considering p value and pi s corrected confidence interval? Yes, retain the statement. If they are no, then you go for outer loadings. Is it more than 0.5? Yes, retain the statement. And if they are not, then in last you will have to remove the item which is not contributing. Now let us carry out the same analysis on CSOR. What we will do again, again I will run bootstrapping, start calculation, you can see the path coefficients more than 0.857. Uh, if there was problem, I am saying if there was problem, then you would have gone for outer weight. Now here you can see that this particular thing, the p-value is more than 0 0.05. Let us check the confidence bias corrected interval also. So positive, this is positive to positive, no zero, positive to positive, no zero, positive to positive, no zero. But here negative to positive, it means that there is a presence of zero and therefore uh, this statement is insignificant. Should I delete it? No. You will have to go one level ahead and you will check outer loading. Is it more than 0.5? Yes, it is more than 0.5 and therefore you will not delete the statement and the conversion validity is achieved. Let us check for performance. I will delete all this. I will delete this. I will delete this also for performance. Calculate bootstrapping. Start calculation. Again, it is 0.811. Not a problem. There is no problem. Uh, check VIF also, calculate PLS algorithm, VIF, is it less than 3, yes it is less than 3. Now in case of dispute, at present there is no problem, but in case of if it is less than 0.7, this is less than 0.7, you would have gone in uh, outer weights, is P value less than 0 0.05, yes. Go in confidence interval, does it include zero in it? No. So all the statements are retained. If this was dispute, if we are having dispute here also, we would have gone still one level up and we would have checked. Is it above 0.5 and is it significant? Yes, then we will retain the statement. So this is all about testing the convergent validity of the formative construct using single global item in Smart PLS. Thank you. You can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.